All right, welcome back. Let's uh, dissect that legal uh, ruling now by uh, the industrial court ordering ASU uh, to go back to work. I'm now being joined on the program by Libros Oshoma, who is a lawyer and uh, a political affairs analyst. Libros, thank you very much for coming on the program. My pleasure. Earlier, I had the um, ASU chairman of the University of Lagos chapter, and uh, something he actually said struck me that, look, that. Um, with the pronouncement of the court that ASU still has um, a, a window sort of within which that they, they, they do not have, that ASU doesn't have to call up the strike now, that they do not have to go back uh, to work, that they have uh, a certain window w within which um, uh, to, 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 to decide on what next to do. Of course, they've said they are going to appeal, but pending the appeal and probably uh, an order for a stay, are they not supposed to uh, resume, comply with this judgment or this ruling? Yeah, um, so that we do not, um, we are not seen to be ridiculing our judiciary. Um, it is a, it's a court judgment. No matter how, you know, or what, no matter what anybody thinks of a court judgment, it's a valid and subsisting court judgment. A pending appeal, uh, a court judgment must be obeyed, must be obeyed, irrespective of what us to think. I think it is high time uh, ASU should obey the court judgment. They can do whatever they want to do later. They can continue their strike later. They can call up, call up another strike later. They, but if they do not appeal and there is no order for stay of uh, execution uh, pending appeal, stay uh, a injunction pending appeal, mm. um, then ASU has to obey that judgment. And then I must say this uh, is very instructive. Um, the way things are going, I think it is high time that, you know, both parties really, really, you know, for the sake and benefit of the students, mm. um, you know, shed their sword. And um, co while, con uh, while negotiations are going on, then, um, you know, you can continue negotiations but return back to the classroom because there are so many issues. There are so many things that will be amiss. You know, these problems cannot be solved in one day. And now you have the issue of uh, whether you collect salaries for the time you didn't work and the rest, and then the back and forth issue of whether um, uh, if government had done what they needed to do, whether the strike would have been called in the first place. I can give you a timeline of um, ASU strike right from 1999 to date. There is no year from 1999 to date that ASU had not gone on strike. Right. And then the, the multiplying effects is um, the standard of uh, our university education and now the university are also taking the students are taking to the streets to protest and if care is not taken it has started in lagos and even though i do not um i i i like the fact that they are waking up to call out you know government and asu i do not subscribe to the approach but you can't take it away from them also that they are grieved Mm. and their future is on the line. And if they do not do anything, posterity also will judge them. And if care is not taken, we might just, you know, also be dealing with the NSAS crisis if government and um, ASU do not, you know, um, sit down and find a, an amicable, lasting solution to this. That's why I think um, that um, it is instructive that ASU comply with this court order. Uh, then you can now begin to take uh, further steps later. We've had, some, we've had some, some ASU officials describe uh, the order as, quote-unquote now, Jankara uh, judgment and, and, you know, try to despise um, the, 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 the ruling of the court and, and the judge. You, you think that's a wise thing to do? If, like I said, if you like, even if you don't like the judgment, it is a subsisting court judgment. And that's why in court, for example, if a judge rules against, against you, you still tell him as the court pleases. Even when, um, in some cases, even when you disagree with the, with the court, you still thank the judge for his uh, industry and um, the time put into the judgment, and then maybe politely inform them that you are going to appeal. So calling the, the judgment a jankara or a, a judgment procured through the back door does not in any way change the fact that it's a judgment of the court. As who had representative in court. Um, parties argued their uh, applications and then um, the court uh, reserved and delivered judgment. And so if you're saying you do not want to obey the court judgment, that means you know you are using illegality to fight 
um, a legal cause. Two wrongs don't make a right. And, and would, it make a sense, would it make any sense at all for us to say, look, we're not going to comply with this judgment and no, it still, go back, still go back to court to seek a stay when, when, when I mean, because yeah, that's, that's, they, they that's, obviously will be need, still needing the court. That's like, that's like telling a court that you're not going to, you're going to disrespect them and then you're still also in another breath asking them for, you know, assistance. Which court will do that? You, com you need to comply with, with the order of the court. Before you can now begin to ask the court, you know, for, 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 uh, to exercise discretions in your favor. And, and that's why for me, I think, you know, ASU should be tactical in um, the way they handle this matter. Now, it is not enough to just go public and discredit, you know, the efforts of the courts. And then, um, while at the same time, you know, you are still going to seek uh, an injunctive relief pending appeal. From, from the same courts. Now, uh, when a ruling like this is given, is, is there a timeline within which uh, people are supposed to comply, for instance? Or it's compliance supposed to be immediate? Yeah, once a ruling is given, the compliance is immediate. It's, it's a declar declaratory uh, uh, ruling, and um, it declares the rights of the parties. And then also, um, now, uh, um, in, in furtherance of that declaratory order, also, now uh, relief, now issue and order that um, ordering us to go back to class, you know. So it's, it's an immediate judgment. There are no, you can't say, okay, well, uh, since uh, the judgment um, just ordered ASU, so ASU still has a window within which not to comply. No, it's an immediate judgment. And um, if we're in other societies where judgment are of the courts, are complied with swiftly, irrespective of who is involved. Everybody by now would have been calling out as to, you know, to say, well, um, you know, there's a subsisting court order, irrespective of uh, the grievances, irrespective of the negotiations, you know, you must obey the court, the rule of the land, um, because there is no appeal. That's why what some persons do, they file an appeal immediately and then ask for, you know, like in this case, an injunction pending appeal. You know, so you can now begin to argue that, you know, there is, um, uh, there are still pending applications to be argued and uh, until all of those are sorted out that uh, you still have, um, you know, the, you're querying the, 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 the judgment and, you know, until that matter is handled, whether, you know, an appeal, a stay should be granted or not, or an injunctive relief uh, pending appeal should be granted or not, that um, until that is sorted out, you, you can't, you know, just rush back to classroom. So, so what, what, what you're saying in essence now is that if, if ASU were to file for uh, an injunction for a stay, yeah. the, the application for that injunction would, would automatically t trigger um, a stay, so to speak. So they, they, they do not really have uh, to call off the strike the moment they, they, they apply for a stay. Yeah, because ASU, in, um, if, if there, I, I, I must also state this, it is instructive to state that an appeal in itself does not act as, act as a stay of execution of a judgment. Um, that's why there must be an application one way or the other. And so if ASU had filed an appeal, an immediate appeal, you know, raising, you, you know, um, uh, issues and um, grounds of appeal, and then an application... Because if it's a declaratory relief, then you need an injunction pending appeal. Okay. If it is, um, 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 what do you call it, an order, then that is where you now begin to ask for a stay of execution pending. If it's an executory judgment, that's where you now begin to ask for a stay of execution pending appeal. So whichever case, um, if there is an application for stay of execution, so that you do not, you are, you are, you are, you are questioning the, the grounds upon which um, that the body of the judgment was reached. Then you give the court opportunity to hear your application, application. for stay, mm -hmm. one way or the other. So in such cases, the law allows you to exhaust your application for stay or the uh, application for injunction pending uh, um, appeal before you now begin to talk about executing such uh, a judgment. And that's why in most cases, once those ap applications are filed, they are served on the sheriff of uh, the court to also inform them that there is an application pending so as not to carry out an execution. Um, so if ASU had, in all honesty, filed um, you know, similar applications, then I would not sit down here to tell you that ASU, ASU should rush back to class because I would be of the view that all of those applications should be tidied up and uh, argued one way or the other or the other 
until uh, the courts um, exhaust its uh, jurisdictional powers, you know, to determine them one way or the other. But in the absence of that, telling me that um, you are still studying and then you have some form of window, I don't think there is any window at all. In the absence of that, what is left to be done is that, you know, there is a judgment that must be obeyed. Let me ask you this final question before I let you go. Do, do you think it's... Um do you think this is something that the court can resolve? Do you, do you think it's, it's the best approach to take issues like this to the court? No, not at all. I do not think. Uh, I think, um, I, I also think the government, the federal government has uh, run out of ideas. You know, if it's a matter for the court, they would have gone to the court in the right. first place, where, uh, even before starting negotiations. I think they ran out of ideas and then um, uh, now felt, okay, they could use the courts, you know, timely to, to you know, intervene using a knee-jerk approach. Mm. You remember, Obasanjo did the same thing. He used the same yes. approach, and uh, it didn't also work for him. Uh, Gulag Jonathan, you know, in an interview said when the ASU strike lingered for too long, he had to step in and sat down with the team, you know, for almost the whole nine that, and the issues were resolved immediately. Well, I think the president should the, do the, the same truth thing. is that th those issues were actually not resolved. They, they just, were resolved. They, they, and just, they, they just know, shifted. Because they that's shifted. the reason the why. Issues <laughs> were, were, were shifted. That's the reason but why we're having this now. At least parties shifted their sword. So if you remember during, um, in 2020 or so, there was a prolonged I mean, strike. This is, an agreement, this is an agreement dating back to 2009. 2009. Even, even before 2009. That's why I told from, you from right from, from just era. That's why I told you right from 1999, ASU had consistently gone on strike every year over the same mm. issues. So, what the president should do? There are it's it's a matter of give and take. You know, uh, you grant concessions. There are some that can be handled immediately. Once the president sits down with the team, if it takes as a man who's at the driver's seat. Once you take over the steering of these negotiations, you can. There are some long hanging fruits you can, you can, you and can maybe as, Asu too should be ready. Yes, to Yes, Asu at that well. point, at that point, being the president sitting down with Asu team, definitely there are some concessions they are going to make, and I know definitely they would make, and then maybe probably. But the, 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 for me, the final issue should be both Asu and the federal government should find a way well. of truly. You know, uh, uh, ensuring that our universities are granted autonomy. Because also, even the corruption that we talk about and with the government is not also limited to the federal government alone. It's also inherent in the university system. You know, so yes. there must be a, a way to actually finally resolve all of the issues so that both parties can actually, f you know, help in moving the educational system in Nigeria forward. Otherwise, we, we will they will call off the strike today. Yes. I can tell you immediately after the next election, once a new government comes on board, <laughs> they might call, up, call, up, call and another warning strike and then you go, go yes. back home. It, it, and it's and sad, then it, really. it will be a, ne a renegotiation of the 2022 report or yes. whatever. I, it, it is sad. And some of us now are, are, are scared of even sending our children to universities in Honestly, Nigeria. Yes. Especially if we have the money, we might, we might do otherwise. Libra Sushilma, thank you very much for coming on the program and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank Always you so very pleasure. much. Thank you. Well, that's how much we can take on the program this week. We thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.